Uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me too? Yeah, sure. sure. Oh, okay. All right, it's, it's, it's time already. So, um, uh, well, I don't expect it to be a long uh, In session. fact, you are in the spirit. <laughs> yeah, so you just talk, just to, just you know, yeah. talk about uh, what you think about SDGs, 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 and uh, maybe after that we, we'll, you know, get some uh, questions from, ah, okay. from everyone. All right, yeah. over to you. Okay, hi everyone. My name is Margaret, so that's no news anymore. So today we want to talk about SDGs. Well, let me begin by talking about um, NGOs, why NGO experience it, it is very, very good. One of the reasons is that with an SGO, uh, NGO experience, you don't need like, uh, there's so much um, unemployment everywhere. So NGO is one of those ways you can actually get the working experience that you need to fill in for your CV you need to fill in for scholarship applications. Yeah. And also, NGOs are one of those places that actually have job functions that are related to the SDGs. And also, I want to like state here that don't go and join an, SG, um, an NGO because you want to get scholarship. You'll be frustrated because you know most of these NGOs, they don't pay. So if you are not, do, if you are not working in an NGO that you have uh, that's doing a course that is, that's related to a course that is close to your heart, that's something you are passionate about. Half through, halfway through, you become discouraged. So please join an NGO because you, you like what they are doing and it's something that is very, very close to your heart. So that even when the, the going is tough, you can keep on going. And you do this because you love it. So I just wanted to state that. Okay. okay. On the SDG, SDG obviously means sustainable development goals. Why is this important? SDG is like the framework. It's like the blueprint for everything. Like, yeah, thank you. SDG is like the framework. It's like the blueprint for everything. I don't know, like, in government. Uh, continue, continue. I'll handle that. Okay. SDG is like the framework, it's like the blueprint for, governor, for, for, for governance, for partnership, for businesses these days. So you knowing about the SDG, it's not a matter of just scholarship. It will help you. It puts you in a very good place. Even when you are looking for jobs, SDGs, SDG is very, very important. So please learn about it, not because you just want to pass, you just want to have a scholarship or because you are just doing for this purpose. If you, if you actually eventually get the scholarship and you come to Sweden to school, you go to Canada, anywhere you want to school, you realize that you still have to go back to learn this thing. So learning this thing will become an advantage to you. Also, I also want to state here that it's just that SI that is like, the, like one of those scholarships that makes, they, they make the requirement very pronounced. I know that other scholarships will not directly tell you, oh, you must learn about the SDGs. But it is good because sometimes when you, when you understand the SDG, the, the 169 targets and the two, 232 indicators, it will help you in a way that you will not even, it's, it's a gift that keeps giving. So it's good for you to learn. Also, it is good to understand the difference between the 169 targets and the 232 indicators. Why? The targets are actually, oh, this is goal one. This is what we want to achieve in goal one. This is what the UN and the, and the, um, and the members of the UN have agreed to, um, the targets they've agreed to achieve. What are indicators? Indicators are measures that you used to, that you used to measure, oh, this target, this is target one. I've, this is what we are going to know if we've achieved target one. That is the essence of indicators. That's why you cannot just read only SDG targets without indicators. It is important for you to, every SDG that you've discovered, oh, is related to my, that is related to 
my work, the cost I'm applying for. Understanding the targets and indicators will help you to understand where and where, how far, how far different countries of the world have gone, have, have gone far in achieving the SDG. Also, on the UN website, you see that when you go to UN website for SDG, like what Mubalaji is showing now, you will realize that UN themselves, they actually use those same indicators to actually show how far the world has gone in achieving these goals. So please, don't just go and read 17 SDG, go and say zero hunger, go 17, say partnership for go and all that. You have to understand the, the targets, you have to understand the indicators. Also, understanding the targets and the indicators will help you to know where to read, what and what to focus on. So for example, if you are someone that is into fashion, you, you want to apply, you want to apply to a university in Sweden that, that is into fashion or a course that's related to fashion or into business. If you understand the targets and you discover the SDGs that are related to your course and the work you've been doing, you will know what and what to read on the internet. The, like what and what other countries are doing that Nigeria or wherever you are is, is missing out. So you know the kinds of things you, you, okay, this is the course I want to read. And because you've already known the targets and the indicators related to that SDG, you've read what, read what other countries are doing that puts them ahead. It will help you to be able to write, fill in your motivation letter, your CV, which like catchy, catchy words that shows that you know what you are doing. Because I understand that the SI, even being here in Sweden, these people like IFA, they like sustainable development. Everything you are doing, they like sustainable development. Like it's, it's a way of life for them. So please, it's important. You see that it's on the, on the website. They underlined it like you can't even miss it. Like you don't, you, you cannot even miss it. This is why I encourage people. Go on, when you are applying for scholarship, I know that you are in Mobologist group. Mobologist is helping you. Please go and read it with your eye. Read everything. Reach the full stop. Because it will help you. I know I'm saying this thing and I know I always stress this thing. You will read on the website, on the document, you will read it again and understand it, break it down in your own language so that you will know what they are saying. Because sometimes, mobology can miss some things out, but because you've read this thing, it helps you to, like it becomes an advantage with what mobology is telling you, then you can merge it up and then you can fine tune your motivation later and your CV and everything based on the rules of that scholarship. This is very, very important. Please read, I'm begging you people, read. Also, um, when you are talking about SDGs, you have to know uh, things like um, the five Ps. The five Ps talks about, uh, um, because they say the SDG is a blueprint for peace, prosperity, people, planet, and partnership. These five Ps, they are related to the SDG. So if, for instance, you want to read about the SDG, you can just type five in Google, you can just say five Ps of SDG. And you will see that you will find something that's related to it. Also, on the SDG, there's something they call SDG transformation. This is something that actually came up after People, uh, the UN realized that, oh, the SDG is too cumbersome. Oh, who is going to read 232 indicators? Who is going to do all that? They now came up with what they call SDG transformation. What is SDG transformation? It's like, it's like, how would I put it? Compact, um, they, comp uh, they compacted different, different SDGs that are related into like five different, five different, trans is it five or four different transformations now? When you, if for instance, you want to, quickly glance through the SDGs. If you, read through, if you read about SDG transformations, you can actually, like the fastest way to go through the 17 SDGs without, as in, in, in a very fast manner, because each, like, each transformation is, trans, um, is, has different SDG combined. So it's another way for you to learn about SDG and it will help you with your application. Also, I would like to state here that on, on knowing about the SDGs, 
it is important for you to know what is even SDG by yourself. What is as this SDG they are saying? Okay, let me if if it's for you to break it down, like me, Amigala, that's my language in Nigeria. If you are Yoruba, if you are Igbo, what are they saying? Break this thing down in a way that you can really, really, really understand. It will help you to know what, the, what is even the SDG in the first place. After that, then you can read, okay, you can read about the targets, you can read about the indicators, you can read about the goals and everything. So this is the starting point. So it's not just for you to say, oh, what you have to really understand why, what is the big deal about the SDG? Why is this such a big deal? And now also, you have to read about different countries. Like, unlike Nigeria, where our website, our, I don't know, our SDG website is about, it's, it's almost like they copied and pasted what is on the UN website. They pasted it on Nigerian, what, 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 what any website that, that is run by Nigeria. So, if you go to other countries, if you go to a place like, Netherlands. Netherlands has a website they call Dutch Development. On that website, you see that they have this website specifically for their own SDG, the things they want to achieve, their own goals, their own targets. You have places like Sweden. Sweden has something like public policy related to SDG, the kind of SDG they are promoting. They also have something like Smart City Sweden. So if you look at different countries of the world, you will realize that each country has a particular website they are doing a lot of things that okay you as someone that's applying for a scholarship you are wondering what the sdg is about you can read about some of these things that these countries are doing but mostly you cannot know about this if you don't even know what the targets the indicators are what are even the goals and you don't even you cannot know which goals you are going to relate to your to you to the course you are applying to the work you have done if you don't even know what the goals are. For instance, if you worked in a bank, for example, of course you can say partnership for goals. That can be your. That can be what you you say. Oh, that's what my SG is related to, and that's what like that's what most people say. Partnership for goals. But then, how are you going to relate it to your work if you don't even know what partnership for goals means? But then, your the work you can you are doing on that counter as a teller. The work you are doing in FT, the work you are doing anyway, even in government office, it, it doesn't mean we work in we work in the FIRS. There are some things you may be doing that may be related with the SDGs that you don't even know because you don't you you've not you don't have the knowledge about what the SDG is. So by reading it, you'll be able to relate it to the work you have done. And also your company may be doing something like a call CSR. That could be related to to SDG. If, for instance, you work in NMPC and you could go, you could go to, um, you could go to where will I say? You could go to Ogoni communities where there's oil spill, and you could distribute uh, relief materials to to community uh, to the community members. You can relate that to an SDG, and you can relate that to the work you are doing. But if you don't even know anything. You don't even know how you are going to relate it. So this is why I encourage people read. I know it's it's like it can be difficult. Like there's so much information, but read. It will help you. Another thing that is there is also understanding. Um, when you go to uh, when you go to the UN website, there's a lot of resources on SDG. Like this site, Mobology is on, and this is one. UNICEF had their own. WHO, WHO have their own. It's like there are so many resources. So you can look at that to begin with. Also, there's, you should be familiar with SDG report. I'm not saying you should read it like, oh, you should read it page cover to cover. But when you read it, you will have key information. Like this SDG transformation I'm saying, it was mentioned in last uh, SD, SD, uh, SDG report for 20, 2019, and then the one that just came out now that's related to COVID-19. They talked about SDG transformation. And also, when you read this report, you will begin to hear things like, like one of the reports last year, they talk on cooperation, which is more, mainly partnership for goals. They talked on transformation. They talked on how, um, how 
uh, they talked on how trade agreements between countries it spills over into different countries how it affects poor countries so they said things like the arms that the arms that is being sold in another part of the world the the the, the conflicts from that one part of the world spills over to another part of the world so we, we said things like what is happening in the north in boko haram is spilling over to other neighboring countries in nigeria so it is important that when you read some of these reports directed to SDGs, you will get information that you need that will help you to fill in your, your document. Like the CV mobile they say SDG mostly related to your work. So if you don't even know about the SDG, what are you even going to fill? So this is very, very important. Also, it's good for you to be familiar with things like uh, multi-dimension multi poverty index, human development index, Poverty Index, Sustainable Development Index, all these figures, you know, that they publish on World Economic Forum websites, all these things. If you don't read, you don't know how to put it because even if somebody wants to help you, I'm not there when you are doing the work. Mobilologists are not there when you are doing the work. If you actually, you actually know these things, you will know how to write. You will know the catchy, catchy words to use. Okay, and that takes me to the next, um, to the next point being familiar with sdg terms like there are some words that they use in sdg you talk of zero hunger you talk of female genital mutilation you say circular economy you say circular fashion you say the growth you say decoupling you say recycling and re reuse so recycling is different from reuse please understand this recycling is different from reuse if you don't read about the sdgs you cannot know what you cannot even know the difference because normally when people say recycling people's mind just go to reuse but there are two different terms so you have to read the sdg you understand this is when you are filling your forms you know the, you know the right thing because you may be saying reuse and what you are trying to say is recycle and then you may be saying recycling what you are saying is you are saying say is reuse so this is very very important that's why it's why it's good for you to read to understand so that you use the right terms also, we talk of things like planetary boundaries. We talk of things like flight shaming, eco gentrification, eco feminism, renewable energy, rare earth, uh, rare el uh, earth elements, you know, um, fast fashion, anthropocene. These are all terms related to the SDG. And when you know some of these terms, it will help. Even when you want to Google, okay, ah, I've discovered that. SDG three, SDG four is related to my field. How do I? What am I going to read about? You know, and there's even something they call buyback. If I work in slot, for example, where they sell phones in Nigeria, I can still get a scholarship, but I just need to know the right word to use. Like for instance, what I mean by buyback, for example, is there's a program people do that is related to fast fashion that many of these companies do in the West, where instead of if I use a phone and the phone, I just throw the phone away. I can return my Infinix phone to slot, you know, and slot instead of then slot to like, like uh, use the parts to make a new phone. Many of these companies do it in the West. So if you work in slot, it's something you can, you can use. Is like it's something you can say you do. That is related to SDG. But if you don't even know what is called buyback, you you not even you will not even know how to write it and when you say buy back that word buy back has already has already covered how many words that you would have used to you have used to like write to fill your form and there's no space so when you use some of these cashew words when you say something like fast fashion that word can cover a lot of like a lot it can cover so many words in, in, a, in a motivation letter where there's no space like they tell you the space is limited so when you use some of these cut catchy catchy words it will help you like if you are into fashion what is circular fashion if you are into fashion and are trying to get this uh, this scholarship all your mind should be circular fashion what is circular fashion i don't think it's a common term in nigeria because in nigeria most times when we say when we say like um we tell, when you ask any fashion brand are you are you do are you doing are, are you doing any sustainable fashion it's, they tell you oh we recycle to most people, recycling is okay. I take pieces of a cloth and I make it into a new one. That 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 one is just old. <laughs> people have moved on from that. But if you don't read, if you don't even know some of these things, you will not be able to keep up. And then 
if you work in a hotel, there's something they call rebuffet. What is rebuffet? Food that people eat that is remaining. Instead of throwing it away, you carry it and go and give it. Some of these things, people do it in, in, where the, in places, places they work. But because you don't even have the knowledge of the SDG, you don't even know how to put it in words. So that's an example. Where you work, the work you do, how do you relate it to SDG? You, you have to read to know, okay, this is what I do. This is, this is, this is what I do. If, for instance, okay, let, let me use the example. I work in the bank. On Saturdays, we used to go and, uh, let's, let me use Zenit Bank, for example. I work in Zenit Bank. I'm a teller. On Saturday, they say we should come for teamwork. And our teamwork is to pick plastic on Adjosa Diogu. That thing that you said, that, that, that thing you're doing is related to SDG. But if you don't even know, you cannot put it in words. It's not as if it's something bogus, bogus. But if you use the right words, you will know what to say. This is very, very important. Because if you read about reuse, like what I say, reuse, re re recycling, there are two different things. Know which one you are using. No one has to do with a product that has not reached the active, the, 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 the active life. Like one is, uh, reuse is something you can, I, I, I wear this shirt, I take it to a second hand shop. Someone is going to buy it and the person is going to, re, the person is going to use it again. That is reuse. But recycling, that thing has reached the end. So it becomes like this shirt has reached, it has been used to the last. I'm going to give it, they are going to reuse, they are going to recycle it. it means they are going to use it as a part of another product they want to make. That is the difference. Please, that is why I keep saying we should read about recycling, I read about SDG. Also, it is important. Some of this is like in Nigeria, when you say renewable energy, people say solar panels, solar panels. There are things now that are being said, like things like, um, um, you know, when, you, when we talk about Elon Musk, everybody, oh, Elon Musk, but now people are questioning because some of those resources they use come from Congo. And then people have been to, begin to talk about ethical parts of this. You know, some of, this, some of these discussions that are going on, if you read about it, you will have an idea. You will have an idea of what to write. Because you saying, oh, you are going to learn so that you can bring solar panels to Nigeria, that is not enough. You know, you have to Touch all the all the all the pros and cons of of, of solar panel. It's not enough. You want to read and bring solar because now the world is now beginning to ask, oh, all the things that they use in electric car, they use in solar panel. How is it going to benefit the comp the the communities where it's coming from? You have things that you have all the argument between the global north and the global south. This is what the SDG is about. Like this argument every day, the things that happen every day. How are you going to relate it to the things that happen every day? You know, when you read about this SDG, for example, it will help you if, it for, if you live in Lagos, for example, and it rains, you know, and you go out because you are reading about the SDG. I'm using myself as a personal example. Before, when it rains in Lagos, what's my business? I'm walking on my street in Yanopaja. The gutter is full, I don't care. But because I tell reading about the SDG, and I actually realize, okay, this rain that is falling, all the PET bottles, they are overflowing the, in the gutter. That's why the water is not flowing. That's because I still becoming interested in the SDG. I'm not beginning to see it in my physical environment. That is, the, that is what it will help you to do. Because I now put myself in a place that I'm reading this thing, okay, not because I want to have scholarship. I'm reading because I want to know it. And then when I go out, I blog about what I do. I just try to make it an everyday experience. So this is very, very important. This is one of the ways you can relate an SDG to the work you are doing. Read it in such a way that it becomes a part of your life every day. And you begin to find a way that the, the, the way you are, the way you go out every day, the things you do, you begin to find a way to relate it with your life every day. It will help you. That is what I did. Because when I tell reading about the SDG, I tell learning about plastic. Okay, why can't plastic in Nigeria be recycled? And then I read that the kind of PET bottles that we use in Nigeria, it is not, it's not recyc recyclable grade. 
if I did not read about that, I would not know. So if you if you are working with recycle, for example, you can use that. You can use that. Can you hear me? He says he can't hear me. Um, okay, let me confirm. Mm -hmm. uh, can anyone hear? Um, can we all hear what we've been discussing? Is there anyone name having any? Okay. Okay. So I, I'm, I, I was saying, hearing, so. okay. So I was saying about my experience because I like to use myself. When I started reading about recycling, when I started reading about sustainable development goals, I started I started learning about okay, zero hunger. I started learning about food banks. I now started learning about okay, why is why don't you have a food bank in Nigeria? What exactly is a food bank? You know, and everything. You know. It's because of what I was reading. And when I, when, I'm, when I read newspaper and I just see anything that is SDG, I just catch it because I have the knowledge and I'm investing and in, uh, uh, learning it. So it is important, please, if, if you go for any outreach, you work in an NGO, you go for any outreach, post it on your Facebook. Let, let, let it become a part of your life. Apply it to your life every day. Like, you know, let it become something so... Like something you like an like ABC to you, like the water you drink, you begin to talk SDG, begin to you begin to dream in fact dream, dream SDGs. And also it is because you are interested in SDG, you want to apply for Swedish Institute Scholarship, you not begin to read what is Swedish foreign policy on because this country they have their foreign policy on sustainable development. If you even check um sustainable development report so many of these countries who who score very very high they have policies that are dedicated to sdg which is why you must read if you are in nigeria if you're in africa read outside your country you will know that things are happening that we are not even we've not even scratched the surface in nigeria a lot of things are happening so this is very very important like if you're into health now this covid pandemic is your best bet. Like, there are a lot of information, a lot of published articles on why it's not working, on whatever flat curve. Read it to know. Like, don't read it because you want to do scholarship. If what if you don't get the scholarship? You'll be frustrated. So read it, be, read it because you want to know it, so that you begin to enjoy it. Because I know this is very, very hard. When you are there, you're waiting for scholarship. Hey, you have applied, you have applied, you have failed so many times. And then, oh, SDG again. But if you read it because you want to, you will, you will, not, it will not even feel like that, you know? And then if you are someone that writes, you can just start a blog. You can, on your Facebook, on your LinkedIn, begin to become interested in SDG. So when you feel like, someone asked me about a uh, link on this thing. When I was feeling my, my, is this CV now for my for my uh, application? I put my LinkedIn profile at the beginning where they ask of your name, go go to go at the beginning of the. I put my LinkedIn profile there, and my my blog is 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 um is linked to my LinkedIn. So anything I write on my blog automatically comes on on my LinkedIn. Automatically comes on my Twitter. So that's one way. You, you don't need to put your blog link on your CV, because I don't know if there's, there'll be space for, for that. But in your LinkedIn profile, let your blog, let your, whatever you are writing, let it be, relate, let, let it be, let it be reflected on your LinkedIn so that when somebody clicks your LinkedIn, they see that the activity you've been doing, this is what you have been writing. That is another way that your SDG knowledge you have been learning, you'll be documenting it. That's, that's what I did. So I think you push, you push that, you should try and do something like that. Let your LinkedIn not just be about trying to connect with people. Be active so that when people will, like, people will see that this is what you are doing, it will really help you. And another thing you can do, you can have a link tree. A link tree has all your, your website, your LinkedIn, your Facebook, your everything. That's another, another thing to do so that when somebody sees your profile, they, can, they begin to see all the work you have done personally. So that's another... That's another thing in here. And what else? Mm. Let's see. 
Well, that's that, well, that's about it. But uh, and that's about it. So it, the, the the bottom line is read. Oh, <laughs> I'm saying this thing, and I'll say it again. Read, even though it's ten times, read it and read it and read it again, because these documents that they use for this scholarship, they have they have information on it. Read on the website, like read it ten times. Go back again, read it again. You understand it yourself by yourself. And then when you are practicing, because the truth is, these documents we are using in September or whenever they are up, uh, starting applications again, it may be different. These ones will guide you. So you can use it to be practicing. Write and write and write and write till you perfect it. This is very, very important. Knowing about the SDG, like I said earlier, you will know. You know, it does not how you read about the SDG yourself. You will not know what to write. It's because you will you will begin to look for news, news articles. Like recently, it rained in Lagos and there's flooding. If you are someone that's interested in the SDG, your mind automatically goes to plastic. There's so much plastic in Lagos; it is blocking the drainage. Why is it not being Why is it not being recycled? You now begin to read about, you begin to read short, short articles on popular, on popular sites that talk about Lagos flooding. You know, it's not about, it's not for you to go and read something that is very, very big, just to have an idea. That's, 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 that's what worked for me. I, I, in fact, I don't even know what else to tell anybody again. That is what worked for me. Until today, I read about the SDG, not because... I'm, I'm, I'm already, I already have a scholarship now, and but in my in my study, in different in, in different um, courses that I've seen, even ordinary students, people that other 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 departments, they talk about the SDG. So SDG transformation, SDG indicators, SDG targets, SDG goals. Find a way to read these things and apply them. Read it in such a way that you put it within like your everyday environment when we talk of things like in nigeria you may not be you may you, you may you may talk of like when we talk about this covid there's health parts there's transparency parts why is it that um the uh, whatever money they've they've been donating is not translating it will help you to read you will know what and what to read about this is it. Read it. You will know how to up. read it in such a way that it becomes. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. We stress it like your everyday life. It will help you, please. So, if you have any question, let's answer now. Hey, thirty-three comments. <laughs> hey, great, 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 great. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so, if you just ask question. Uh, all right. Um, wait, can you hear me very well? It's like my voice is Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Yeah, so um, that was uh, quite insightful. Uh, yeah, somebody was asking me I the, should uh, I should talk about uh, I should talk about the the terms that I said earlier. Okay. I talked of the growth. I talked of circular economy. I talked of circular fashion. I talked of buyback, decoupling, recycling, reuse, biodiversity, planetary boundaries, uh, flight shaming, eco gentrification, eco feminism, fast fashion, systems thinking, zero hunger, anthropocene. But normally, when you when you read the SDG uh, SDG goals, you will see these terms they have been mentioned. In between, so. Um, okay, just to add, so sort of a comment to what she said, or what she, to summarize the importance of why you need to understand um, the role of SDG is doing the uh, SI scholarship application. I want to show you um, the template for the last the motivation letter, the last application. So that you see how um, um, okay, this is the motivation letter. 
uh, used in the last application. Um, okay. So you see the second question, they're saying, mm -hmm. um, you know, please choose one of the master's programs that you're applying for, and then motivate how this program can contribute to the UN Centipedia Agenda for Sustainable Development. So you can see what they've dropped here. That means you need to know, you need to understand your the program you are coming for. You need to know what is it, what is it about. How is it going to contribute to the sustainable development? And then you need to know which of the uh, goals or the agenda is most you know, uh, related to the uh, program you are coming for. So that's just to tell you how important um, UN SDGs are to um, the Swedish Institute. Right, so uh, now let's look at the questions that we have from you guys. Um, someone says, uh, how can I approach the relationship between, between my experience and desired SDG? To clarify, if I need to choose one indicator and talk around it, I'll talk I'm talking about the SDG as a whole. Someone talked about SDG and infrastructure. Me, that is not my field. So, but that's why I said you should read it. Yeah, like if, when you talk of technology and infrastructure, that's what we call decoupling. Decoupling now, people are now saying that, people that are in that field, they are now saying that decoupling proves that uh, as, they, as they call it, the company proves that renewable energy will not be sustainable in the long term. When you read the SDG, you will know, because this is not my field, you will know which words to, you will know where to read, you will know the things, what is happening presently and how to apply it to your read, to, to your situation. This is the point. Whatever you are doing, whatever field you are in, read the SDG. What is what and what is happening? Okay. Uh, what and what is okay? You will read. You will look at the sustainable development report. Which countries are top top ten? What and what are they doing in each of the SDG? Because when you go to this website that has this report, they score each country, and you will see that you will see what each country is doing. For each, for each SDG, and then you will know, okay, uh, this, is, this is Sweden. Go one, this is what they are doing. Go two, this is what they are doing. And then they will write some, some, some information by, those, by, um, by each of those targets that, you, that will help you to actually do your research further. So that is, that is it. That is, your, that is the best thing. Uh, that is the best thing. So you have to go and read the SDG. If possible, read the SDG report and then look at countries that are top and then look for how they are doing in the SDG that is related to your own and then you find a way to apply it. So it's not my field. So I really cannot say anything about that, but that's what I can tell you. I just use those ones as an example. Buy back in slots, buy back in fashion and all that, secular fashion and all that. That fashion being is now beyond taking scrap of clothes and making something reuse and recycle. I just use them as an example. These are all SDG tips. And then let me see. Okay, okay. Let, me, let me see this person. This is how can I approach the relationship between my experience and uh, desired is to clarify if I need to choose one indicator and talk around it. I'm sure, I'm talking about the whole SDG. Okay, so let we me don't see. Need to, Okay, let me let me see one. Which indicator? Let me uh, go to go one. Let's say go one. Mm, go one. Yes, is there indicators and targets there? Okay, yeah. Um, is there indicators and targets? See, okay, targets are indicators. Yes. So, like I said. The target now, he said, by 2030, target one. By 2030, er eradicate extreme poverty for all people everywhere, currently measured as people living on less than 
1.25 dollar a day now earlier i i talked about you being familiar with uh, multi dimension poverty index be familiar with uh, hdi human development index be familiar with poverty index now you will know if you are a nigerian when you go when you read this thing just the way you have countries being ranked in the sustainable development report you have countries being ranked in their hdi being ranked in their m um, mpd mdpi it will not give you an idea where nigeria is the country that's at talks where they are then you now begin to understand ah this is what this country is doing that they are, uh, uh, they are uh, eliminating they are trying to uh, achieve go target 1.1 this is this is where nigeria is what are they doing that nigeria is not doing now when you know that you now apply it to your i, I don't know how to explain it. let me use myself as uh, let me use myself as when i was in lagos food bank for example this now means i now look at the work lagos food bank is doing okay part of what we are we were doing there was we don't give people just food we try to empower them so that you will be so that you will be able to stand on your own and then stop depending on the on the on the food bank. Now I have I have used my work now to relate to target 1.1. This is the same way. If you go to uh, this is the same way. If you go to other SDGs, the way they are written like that, read it and apply it to your physical. It's like to your work i don't know if this is clear now or i don't like this is how this is like this is how i did eradicate extreme poverty there's difference between poverty and extreme poverty the slums we used to go to in lagos in makoku in yaba in um what is the name of that there's a place in ajegunle those people they are the they are the extreme in in lagos those people are very very poor so part of what we are doing, we are catering to people in the slums. So my work now, I'm trying to relate it to this. So when I'm writing, I'm going to measure eradicate extreme poverty. This is catchy SDG word. Whoever is reading your 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 whoever is reading your your work, we know that you know what you are saying. You don't say you are going to feed poor people. Mm -mm. Extreme. Uh, poverty. You, there are some words here that you can use that will help boost what you have to say. I don't know if this is clear. And if you go to the indicators, indicators. Uh, if you go to the indi indi indicators now, indicators will tell you how do you now know you are achieving target one point one. How many? Because it tells you the population. Like, the, like it. It gives you like if I say, for instance, I went to Makoko. And we are carrying out a program to reach the extreme poor. How do I measure that this has been achieved? This is the work of the indicators. Indicators tell you how far you've achieved the target. The target says this is what goal goal one is want to achieve. The target, the indicators say, how do you know you have achieved that target? This is the difference. Target says this is what we want to do. Indicators, how do you know you have achieved that target? So you now see here now, it says proportion of the population below the international poverty line. So how do you know what the international poverty line, if you don't even know what multidimensional poverty index is? Where you don't know what poverty index, what you don't know, where you don't know what AGI is. So when you know this, when, you, when they say international poverty line, you don't just read it and say, oh, international what does international poverty line means this is what you go and research so i hope this is clear because that's what i did though that's that's what i did okay um someone says um can one combine three sdgs if it goes with one uh, yes you can because if it goes with one you know, line of study yeah, because SDGs are related, and this is where SDG transformation comes in. You know, the SDG transformation is multiple SDG mixed together. The SDGs that are related. 
So it's like one of the fastest way for someone to learn about the SDG because when you read Transformation 1, you read multiple SDGs together. So that is one way you can read. If you don't want, if for instance, okay, the SDG, ah, these 17 SDGs are too many. I don't, I, I mean, I cannot read that one. Then go to SDG Transformation. It will tell you Transformation 1 is it, related, is related, is related, is related. So it will help you to know the SDGs to focus on. So you can go to SDG Transformations. So that, that, will help, that will help the person to be able to combine multiple SDGs. Okay. Yeah. Um, someone says, um, when writing the motivation letter, how do you write it or link it to so all the master's program one applies for? Because one can apply it to three programs up, then can one write the motivation letter? Uh, mm. Well, the, the issue is, it depends on what the questions are in the motivation letter template. And, uh, you know, the questions change every year. That's what I was at in the motivation letter. So, but the fact is, from, I'm speaking with respect to the last um, application mm -hmm. round. Um, it just, it just, it just select one course you're applying for. Like, it's, it's stated clearly in the, the motivation letter that just select one, choose one. Like, it says, just choose one. Master program you apply for, then talk about it. So they only need for the scholarship um, application, they only need one motivation letter. So that that's all. I mean, it's a it's one application, one scholarship application, and when the scholarship application portal, you can select all the courses you are applying for, just you know, like a drop box or check box or something, and then upload your documents. Just you know, they are not writing three as for the scholarship, just you know, just one. Yeah, these are the these are the transformations as I was saying. It has different like the person I was talking about technology. It depends what type of technology are you saying. Technology is very, very wide. So when you say technology, which type of technology? So it's it's you have to be specific. Like you have to be specific. This is very, very important. He said in your CV. Mm, can you quote some of the uniform? There is no space. Where is the space for you to quote UNICEF report? There's, there's no space. I and there's no need, need to quote UNICEF report. Ah, there's no space. There's no need. They just, they just, they just show from the writing that you understand yes, the what you are coming you, from, you are how it's and this is, to yeah. this. So it's not about quoting according mm -hmm. to UN. Uh, sorry, report reports. No, they don't need that. So, like, you know, can't that's, do that. You know? That's what I was saying. Like when I said, um, when I said, if you know the right words. If I work in any bank, and we this week, this COVID time, we went to distribute so 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 team. I work in NNPC. We went to a community in Ogoni River State to do to 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 um, distribute some of these things. By saying I went to Ogoni community, which is ravaged by OS pillage. Now, that mean me wanting to mention that means I have to talk about climate change. You know? So if you don't know about the SDG, how do you how are you going to know that ah this thing I'm distributing to this community that is ravaged by oil spillage is related to climate change? Because you not just say I, you have to mention, like, if, let, let's say, for instance, you work in slum to school, and you went to Makoko to distribute, you can, you, can, you can actually write beyond just saying, you can actually write just beyond what you're going to distribute. The fact that they don't have sanitation, they don't have toilets, the water body is polluted in that community. You are already going to climate, you are already going to talk on life on land. You are already going beyond one SDG. So this is, this is how this thing works. Catchy, catchy words that to summarize everything you want to say. You know, when you use some of these words, like when you say decoupling, decoupling is a very long word, but you can use it in a sentence to say something that will just coincide what you want to say. So that is why you must read this thing to know the buzzwords to use. Uh, we susceptible to <laughs> We call them yeah, I think we, so. we receive a lot of questions. We need to be you honest. said I was talking about information technology. Yeah, I'm still telling you the same thing. 
you have to know me this is not it's not my field like what you are excuse me like what you are saying now the coupling is related to information technology computer system and network it's related to it you can relate it, you can relate it to uh, smart cities uh, sustainable cities you can relate it to consum uh, sustainable consumption it's just knowing this thing and knowing how to relate it because the, the good thing about the SDGs is that I can relate go one to life on land. I just need to know how to do it. I can relate go two to go eight. I just need to know. Like when you say sustainable consumption, that goal is very, very wide. It talks of food wastage. It talks of uh, uh, fast fashion. Everything that has to do with human consumption is inside. It talks of inside that place you have what they call Black Friday. It is inside. So all these things is just knowing how to, how to like, how to use them. That is why if you read it and you understand it, the work you are doing, you will know how to infuse it inside. And then because you know this thing, you know, you know, one of the ways to help you to actually understand these things, read current news, like read current news about related to these SDGs. Then you know, like when we talk of, when we talk of like presently now because of the lockdown, there's things like uh, people are fighting, they are beating women, they are raping children, all those things. These are the things that you can relate to SDGs. That is why I said you have to break it down like to every day, your everyday environment. You don't have to read, you don't have to go and use, uh, it's an, it's, it, the trick is you use buzzwords, but you don't use bogus, bogus language. So, and also knowing those buzzwords will help you to know what to read that relates to your field. So that is it. Okay. All right. Uh, we've got a lot of questions, so I think we just need to yeah, you said, uh, uh, just look at every, Does it question. make sense to mention the same SDG? Of course. You can have the same, you can, you can, you can have one SDG throughout, but if you look at SDG transformations, you know that one SDG cannot stand alone. What most countries do is, you look for SDGs like in Nigeria now. What is pressing for Nigeria now is hunger and poverty. See, this is our greatest challenge in Nigeria. So as a Nigerian, your mind is, if I were to be in policy and planning, that is, what, that is the foundation I'm going to build my other SDG, achieve, uh, achieving other SDG on. But it differs from country to country. So that is, every country knows what their priority is and how they want to achieve it. So this is where you need to focus on. So it depends. That's why you have to read beyond your country, beyond your environment, and bring it back and apply it in practical terms. That's why I use the example of when I was not reading about the SDG, if it rains, I don't even care whether the gutter is blocked or not. But because I started reading about the SDGs, I started understanding why is plastic not being recycled. It's because I started, I'm being reading about this and I'm trying to relate it to my environment. So I write about it on Facebook, on, on, on Instagram, on Twitter. It just became an everyday experience. And then I still learning because the more you write, the more you learn. That is it. Okay. Uh, said that uh, which SDG is related to work of an accountant, account officer in a company? Ah, your, your, your own is partnership for goals now. But your company has a whole. What other? Don't you do CSR? Has your company never, not, never donated to any, any course? Is it that you could just do work, do work like that? But mostly, if you don't know which SDG to use, you can say partnership for goals. But it's best you read about the SDG so that you will know. You know, there are some things you are doing in your office that you don't even know is related to SDG. That's what I'm telling you. Yes. Uh -huh. So you say, yes, food. Uh -huh. So there are things that they are doing that you will not even know that is related to SDG, you will, just, you will just be confused. But if you read it, you will know. Now, you said, she said school, like some people, they donate 
uh, they donate diapers. There's what they call diaper bank in, in other parts of the world. I don't know, we don't have it in Nigeria. Just like food bank, there's what they call diaper bank. So if you read about this, you see what is happening in other parts of the world and you will know. So that's it. Uh -huh. See, I currently work in a hotel, but I have a side business that is in... <laughs> hey, it's up to you. Which one do you want to use? That is it now. It's up to you. Which which of the roles do you want to use? Do you want to use your role as a, as a hotel manager? Or do you want to use your role as your side, this thing? So you can you can either use your, you know, you can, another way you can do it is you can use that one for your CV. And when you talk of leadership experience, you can use your side also as your leadership experience. You just knowing you weigh your options and you weigh the hours, you weigh which one has more, more potential. And the one that, you know, and the one that you can get signature for and get stamp for, because if you're, if your experience is so good and you don't have somebody to approve it, to stamp it and sign it, that's another problem. So that is very, very important. Hmm. Ah, research and development. <laughs> that is all the SDG now. Which, what are you put researching? Research and development. What, what are you researching? What are you developing? What specifically? You can't just say research. What are the specific, specific words you have, you can use? Like, what, 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 are people, what have people achieved? What specific things have people achieved in your role as research and development, you know? Yeah. So please, after today, go and read the SDG, read current news about what is happening so that you will know how to practicalize it. It's, it's the best, it's the best bet. It is the best bet. No matter what I say from now to tomorrow, if you don't go and read that thing by yourself, even me, there's some things I will say that, that I'm here that I've missed. I, I, I know I might remember to say it. Yes, as a branch manager in a bank, I was working in FT in Zenith Bank. I told you that I put partnership for goals in my work, where they say SDG related to your work. I say partnership for goals. But as a branch manager, you, you could have done some CSR. So you can find an SDG related to the work you have done. So when you are talking about your duties now, you will mention those duties so that they will be reflective of the SDG you have mentioned. That is it. So you cannot just say my work is related to uh, SDGs. You have to, your, 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 job, uh, your job description must match that SDG you have point, you, you've mentioned. So that's another thing. Don't go and say, I may help this time. You go and mention, you go and mention life or land. How does it, how, how, how has what you have written, how does it relate to the SDG you have mentioned? So that is it. Summary of target indicators. I said that, I said that there are one, there are 169 targets, 232 indicators. And I said that, uh, and then there are 17 goals. I said that the targets are what the goals are about. Goal one, what do we want to, what do we want to achieve? This is the target for goal one. This is the target for goal two. This, uh, this, uh, this are what I mean by that. Then indicators are how do you measure that the targets have been achieved? You can't just say, oh, I'm feeding hungry people. I'm, uh, I'm into renewable energy. How do you know you have achieved that target? This is the work of indicators. Indicators help you to measure to measure your progress. And that is, and when you check the sustainable development report, you will see that they actually, they use that same indicators to say this country is doing well, this country is not doing well. So that is, that is the difference. So if you go to the website, you will see, just type, just type SDG target indicator on Google. There's nothing that is not on Google. Just take your time, you will see. 
what is CSR and links or site to read SDG? CSR community um CSR is um how did I write it? Um corporate social corporate social responsibility. The things your company do to help people, the less privilege. That is it. Yes, you can concentrate on SDG related to your study. But I'm just trying to tell you that there is no SDG that stands alone. This is why I talked of, this is why I talked of um, SDG transformation. Please go and read that thing. It has multiple SDG wrapped together. So if you are someone that you don't, you, you want to, you, you don't want to like read the 17 SDG, if you read SDG transformation, it will tell you which SDG, which SDG is related. Is it is something that just that is new that is done by Jeffrey Sachs, a, a professor in the US and some other people like that. So it's another way for you to for you to do this thing. SDG transformation. Let me write it in the chat now. This is you need to read it. You, it will give you an understanding. It's like an overview of all the SDGs, and it's like a very fast way for you to understand. So he said, yes, it doesn't matter if you work in 10 places and you can relate it to the same SDG. It's also good. The point is your work experience, the course you are applying for, and the rule of the scholarship, it has to align. What do they say they want? What do they say they want? How do you, and now how do you, what are the rules? What is my experience? What, in what way do I describe my experience to relate to the course I want to study? So everything will just be in sync. Because this is not just, you know, this is not just about SI. I know that many scholarships they, they talk about it, but it's just that they are not they, are, they don't pro, they don't make it pronounced like the way SI makes their own pronounced. So it's good for you to learn. You know what to and actually of course you can you like this thing is you can relate your SCSR to your work. What I'm saying is in the C V what you are writing as your job description, as your responsibility, let this rhyme with the SDG you mentioned. If you cannot say you are doing a work that is related to SDG two, three, four, and then you go and put life on land, and you don't show how that life on land is related. So sometimes if you are in doubt, you can say partnership for goal. That is it. Yes, can you can we tell our experience with SDG in our CV? It's, it, I thought you, my brother, I thought you put the CV up before. If you check the CV, it talks about the roles you have done and the place that. How does it relate to? You? Of course, you can. Yes, now in this in the CV. See it now, you say SDG mostly related to the work you are doing. You so you are what is it now? Replace with your main tasks and responsibilities. Those places now you will say what you have done. Now, brief description of network and civil or civil organization or wherever you you think you write it there. One of the main achievements you achieved within your network. Now, as it, it like these things now, if for instance I can say I work as I work in FT. Let me use myself as an example. I worked in FT. One of my achievements when <laughs> when my direct boss was sick, I I I, I, I took over the FT. Then in Jalingo, I took over the FT. 
I was able to achieve so, 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 and so. Ah, so, 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 so. I did not just say I took over. I, I made sure that I took over when to step where my boss was sick. But I made sure the thing that we achieved, you know, we did report on time. We did this. We were just only two. You know all those things. So you have to be specific. There's no, there's no space now for you to be writing long story. So I hope this, I hope this is clear. Leadership experience. Leadership experience. If you let, if you let people, like if you say. Like leadership experience. Now, if you say I work my team, I I, I led a team of five people. We would we, we did so 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 and so with dates, with figures. This is it. Be specific. Like we 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 were a team of five. We went to a community of we went to this community. We reached up to 50 families. We reached up to 10 families. This and this and what we did. Bam. You have said what you have done. End of story. There's no, you, you, you know, even now because you have been specific. And you, you will write this in such a way that it's convincing. That is it. Okay. Uh, we are receiving so, so many questions. And of course, <laughs> it's not possible to attend to all of them. Well, well, but, you come, come and carry your people, oh. You will be doing Join this master class. Me, for now, I, I really cannot review any documents personally. But I will try and answer your questions and, uh, you know, and, and try my best. But Bobolaji is the best person to help you to review your documents. Because me, personally, in this video like this, I'm still trying to also. <laughs> I'm still trying to also, you know, next semester is coming. There's internship and so many things I'm still trying to do. So for now, I cannot, I can't review anybody's documents. So, but, <laughs> if, you, but if you have questions that we've not answered, mm -hmm. uh, you can just send an email to coach at Scholars of Africa. And then you can reach me on you, you can reach me on Twitter or on my Instagram. I have a new Instagram account. That one is not private. So. You can follow me there. You can ask me a question there. I will, I, I will answer. The other one is my private account. So there's a new one now. Let me write it in the this thing. You can follow me that one. Video, right? No, not that one. That one is my, pri is my private. It's my private account. I have a new one. The 360. So that one will... I, I, as in, you don't need... I don't need... You can follow me directly. It's not a private account. I will respond and everything. So that is it. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah of course, can. it's. Uh, he said that uh, someone talk about CDS here. Yeah, you can. Uh, let me see. Yes, thank you. So I will try and answer your questions, but I really I can't review your but You can reach out to me. I'll try and answer your questions. So please, I'm saying this again. Go and read. See, read this thing. Let it become a part of you. That when they wake you up from sleep, you know what's up. Like it's you. You read it so you that you enjoy it. You know, you enjoy it and and do it because you want to learn. If you do this because you want to do scholarship, you know the way SS scholarship is like when you are applying. When, when when before you would you know the way they used to do the admission in Sweden. They will first say whether you are qualified or you don't qualify. You will wait again. You, it's in progress. Before you say qualified, you know, you don't want to put yourself under pressure. Do it because you want to learn so that you can take advantage of other opportunities in other parts of the world with the knowledge you have learned. Yes, that is it. And then try to make it on your social media. Today you went for entry, write it on your social media. Let people know you are this, what you are up to on your blog, everything. Just try to make it a daily part of your life. You to make it to enjoy it faster. So I hope, I hope, uh, I hope this was helpful for all the questions. But if you have more questions, you can ask me. I will try and respond. Yeah, yeah we, we really apologize. We can't, can't take all the questions. But just, just send um, whatever questions you have. Um, just send to 
an email or go to Scholars of Africa or to migrate to Instagram at chidate 360 yeah so um thank you guys for thank you guys for joining on this today. thank you thank you mobalaji thank you everybody and have a great evening yeah the email is coach at scholars of Africa. it's yeah. on the screen can you see it margaret yeah yeah it's coach at school maybe you remove the underline remove the line okay yeah. Yeah. See you guys. Yeah, enough. Yeah. All right. Good night. Have a great Bye. Sunday.